Hey team, this is Anders. Um, what we want to do today is start dissecting some lifts of people that move pretty well in here so we can get a better idea of what's going on when we kind of talk to you guys about um, certain aspects of the lifts. Um, here we have Dr. Rob Walter um, doing some clean and jerks, a pretty decent weight for him. Um, see over here on the left side of the screen, pretty decent setup. We could probably push those knees back just a tad. Um, but coming off the ground here, everything looks pretty solid until we start to get to about here. And you can kind of see how that bar starts to get out in front of them. When we take it over to the right side here, we can back this thing up and show you the actual bar path of what's going on here. And as this thing loads, He's not getting that bar back into his body. You'll hear us often talking about sweeping the bar back into your body. And what we're looking for is instead of it, that barbell coming out and around here, we're looking for it to sweep back into the body and then into the jump. You can see how it comes out and around his knees and then up. And he's so strong that he's able to power clean that almost and catch it here and then ride it down into that squat. A um, couple things to think about when we do this, we always talk about grabbing the floor with your toes in the startup and then pulling back on that bar, getting your knees out of the way. A lot of just deadlifts with a clean grip, um, sinking those hips down a little bit, not your standard deadlift, but a clean grip deadlift. Um, but we can fix these problems pretty easy. This is really just about lifting out of your quads um, instead of where you should be and lifting out of your hamstrings. Once again, want to see that bar shift back into your body here and then get it to the hips. Uh, we can move forward to the jerk here and this is something we really want to talk about. We're losing a lot of power. You can see here how this bar comes around and then shoots out in front and then up before he's able to catch it. And what we want to think about if we watch here as the bar dips, you'll not watch his very first move here. His elbows drop, bam. Now the dip over here might look pretty solid when he catches this thing overhead. When we slow this down, oh, at full speed that doesn't look too bad. When we slow it down, we're able to see instantly, first thing that moves, drop shoulders, hips fly out, and now we're trying to regain that core so we can move that bar straight up and down. What happens is the bar comes around and then shoots out the front and you end up chasing it around the gym. So what happens is, it's actually a pretty decent split, but you can see this back leg so straight here. What we prefer is if this chest is able to come straight up and down here, this knee is going to have a slight bend in it. We can actually move that back foot in just a tad, and we're going to be much more stable, much more up and down, keeping that torso upright, and we'll be able to make significantly more weight with this. A um, couple coaching points in that jerk, just really keeping that chest nice and tight, keeping it big, keep those elbows high. Really want to focus on getting set before you go and make the jerk. Um, making jerks is actually significantly easier um, when we're not chasing the bar forward. You can see when this bar path comes down, up and around, and then shoots out the front, you have to move your body forward. And what happens is this back leg straightens out, this knee's slightly over the toe, we're a little too far forward there, and you start chasing the bar. So, coaching points, in that clean, pull that bar back into your body, and then keep that dip straight up and down here, so we can drive out of our heels, push ourselves under the bar.